Hi, my name is Gerhard Schwantner and welcome to the Sales Up Shop. Today we have the pleasure of meeting again with John Durr, who's the president of the Rain Group. Welcome, John. Thank you, Gerhard. Uh, again, always a pleasure to speak with you. John, you know that American companies spend about $5 billion a year on sales training and most of it is wasted. Why? I think the understanding of what you're trying to accomplish with that sales training is all wrong from the get-go. How many times do I get called where people say, I want to do sales training? But before we start, can you tell me what leads you to think that you need to do sales training? Well, our sales are down and we figure that's the best way to do it. And now the first problem with that is it could be the training, but it could be lack of knowledge. So the person is perfectly well-trained in the skills and an excellent salesperson, but they don't know the ins and outs of what they're selling. It could be that the company hasn't provided the right tools. So they have a lousy client, uh, customer relationship management system. They don't have good support material. They don't have a good database. Uh, they don't have a good sales coach. So that could be the problem. Or maybe, and I've seen this a lot with professional service firms, is if I sell a lot or I sell a little, it doesn't matter. So there's no rewards and consequences. So all those things are missing, and sales training isn't going to do any good at all. So what is the right way of diagnosing sales training needs? Well, first of all, you look at where things are breaking down in the sales training process. You can use an assessment tool, and we use an assessment tool, which we love and it gives us a great insight into what's there. But even if you don't want to use an assessment tool, step back and look at your pipelines. So if you look at your sales pipeline, it can tell you where you might need sales training and for what you need it. The other thing you look at your your turnover. It may be uh, we're not hiring the right people. So there's there's a lot of ways to analyze where you need the sales training, but the first thing I always say is step back and look and see what's not happening. There is another phenomenon. When I did sales training, I was told by my clients, uh, my salespeople are really good at closing the sale and good at handling objections. And once I traveled with salespeople and shadowed them, I realized so there's a huge difference between imagined behavior and actual behavior. How many sales managers do as you do? So they listen to the salesperson, give them the feedback as to what's going on and what's not going on, and they, they ask their salespeople what happens. So it's not even observed behavior, it's self-reported behavior. Let, let me put it to you another way. I, I, I like to use the golf analogy when I talk to people about sales training. So many, many salespeople are golfers, so this always works well for them. And you ask how many people have ever taken golf lessons. And you get a good raising of hands. And how many people went to one golf lesson or two golf lessons and it changed their scores? Well, nobody raises their hand on that. And I ask, why is that? Well, I'll tell you why, because I've done it. You go out, you change the way you approach things because you want to improve your flows. You want to improve your close rate, putting it in sales terms. And you learn a couple of techniques. So you learn how to hit your irons a little bit better. And you do that. But remember, you've got years of bad habits to get past. And so you go out in the field and you try it once or twice. And it works pretty well. But the third time you try it, something wasn't going right that day. The customer wasn't right. You weren't right. The situation was right. And it fails. So what your, re what your reaction is to say, oh, that new way of doing things didn't work very well. I'm going to go back to my old behaviors. Like with the golf swing, it takes about 500 practice balls before your muscle can memorize that one swing. It takes a long time to make this a habit. Right, right. And, and that is the problem. It is about habits and it is about confidence. It's also belief in the system. It's belief in the swing. You said it takes 500 practices to get the muscle memory, but it's also the mental belief that this is the way to do it. The big psychological aspect of sales is, is understated, and part of it is to practice and repeat and develop new rituals. Think about all the great salespeople that are now CEOs, and uh, I'm thinking of two right now. One is uh, Mark Benioff. 
who was a telephone sales rep for Oracle, and he wore a headset and he made sales calls. Same with uh, Bill McDermott. He was a sales rep for Xerox, and he got Puerto Rico as a territory. And within two years, he made it the number one territory in the country. How did they do it? Because they mastered it. They had that fluency, and they still do it. But fluency is when I'm in the middle of a sales conversation, and the pressure's on, and I get that question. I can say it in a snap of a finger. So how do you gain fluency? And one of the ways that we employ, and one of the ways we see really work well, is you teach towards fluency. So you teach to the point where people in the snap of a finger, when you ask them, how do you handle this objective? Bang, I got it. What's the, what's the three products that we have that can fill this need? Bang, I got it. What is the issue going on in the industry we sell to that we should know right away? Bang, I got those right away. And there's a lesson to be learned from the profession of acting. Actors rehearse and practice for a long time to appear natural. Right. I did take an acting course uh, a couple of years back. I had a client who sold leadership training and they used actor to sell it and part of what they did is they taught you some principles of acting. And one of the things that they did teach as well, and this is something that I think is necessary for sales training when it's not employed, is the concept of presence of being present at all moments in that conversation. And so one of the other things that's important in sales training and you can't change is the role of role play. Good sales coaches role play with their individual salespeople all the time. They don't just say here's how to handle an objection. Let's see you do it. Because it's one thing to intellectually know how to do it. It's another thing to do it in the moment. Well, I definitely would recommend a book called An Actor Prepares by Konstantin Stanislavski. Uh, that teaches actors how to be natural. Yeah, and I would recommend a book called Leadership Presence. Um, you know, you talk about acting, let's go a little bit further with that. I was in a, a, a classroom teaching and we were talking about the necessity of practicing and somebody said, yeah, it's not like improvisational co comedy, you know, you have to really practice. And I had somebody in the back of the room raise their hand and they said, no, improv, we practice all the time. And so, of course, we got into a great discussion about how do you practice for improv. And I came out of that thinking that sales is like improvisational acting, where I know what I might meet up with. I am prepared for the situations, and so I practice those really well, but I never know which one I'm going to face, so I have to practice even more. It's even tougher than if I'm practicing for a theatrical performance where I know my line and the next line. I don't know the customer's next line. So the more you practice, the more you have your, your questions and your answers and everything ready, the better off you're going to be. Well, thank you, John, for those recommendations. You're a great teacher, and this was a great conversation. Thank you, John. Thank you, Gerhard.